Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part 7 of Shenzhen I.O. and we have a smart grid control router to work on. I'm pleased to say we've been selected for another Sun project, a simple data router for smart grids. Mr. Sun is never interested in civic infrastructure before to our knowledge, so I really wonder what he's planning. I may ask around, my uncle's had dinner with him once or twice. We can do it! Note these X bus inputs are blocking, so we'll connect all the inputs so that they can all be read at once, simultaneously. That sounds very obvious to me. Okay, so meter in and meter out are X bus inputs and outputs that connect this no node to the building's smart grid power meter. Lower in and lower out are inputs that connect this to the node with the lower and higher. Okay. And the first value in, so we have a data packet, and then we have to retransmit. Okay, so the idea is that we need to take the input from one of the three inputs, and we need to then figure out which one to retransmit the packet to. And the second value in the packet is the number of letters following. So we have the address followed by the length, and this gizmo, I guess, is supposed to tell me what my address is. So dare I go with the little one, or should I just go straight for the big one? I mean, it, in a way, I can always cut and paste the code if, I don't know, let, let's try the little one first. So, bring in the MC4000 and say, hey, you know what, wait, we, these are all X buses, let's do the MC4000X. Now, good question, can I just merge X bus inputs? So what I'm going to do is just sleep on the input, and then when it happens, I will move it into the accumulator and see what happens, right? So this is just a test, because I don't know if the X bus is just merged. And it appears that X bus works magically, and all the inputs merge. Fantastic. Okay, now for the output, we absolutely need an MC6000, because we need one X bus input, and then we need at least three X bus outputs. So and we can't just use the, the DX300. So, I think that will work. Now, the actual address of my unit that I'm in uh, is stored on this gizmo, which is on an X bus. And I can't use another X bus connector on the MC6000, but I do have a spare X bus here. So the first thing I'll do, here's, here's my brilliant plan, is I will Send this will just forward on the packet data and it will precede it with the value in X2, right? So it'll read this and send at the head of every single data packet. Brilliant. And the next byte is the address of the packet, so I'm going to forward that on. But now, second byte is the size, so we probably want to store that in the accumulator and then run some sort of loop where we decrement the accumulator. So we're going to start a loop here and I guess what we're going to do is move every value in x0 into x3. And now, wait a second. I might... Or am I going to have enough bytes here? Am I forgetting something? Hold on. You know what? Ah, of course, I now need to move the accumulator because that is my second byte. So I've stored it. Second byte needs to go across the data bus because we need to replicate that. Now move the x value. Uh, and then we're going to subtract one, and if the accumulator is equal to, not equal to zero, then we continue our loop. So that way we're basically decrementing this down after setting it, right? So test greater than accumulator, greater than zero. If that's true, jump to the loop, otherwise fall through back to the start of things. And the data is now all in here. So the first thing we need to do is sleep on the X input. Then uh, we need to somehow, we need to move the first two bytes into useful places. So the first one should move into like the DAT register. So that is the address that we're sending data to. No, wait, no, no, that is actually our address, right? So we store that in the DAT register. And then the second one that comes through is going to be the address that we send it to. So we have to store that in the accumulator. Oh, there's a problem here. So, I need to figure out whether DAT is different from the accumulator, right? 
and but I also need to send on. Oh, okay. There, there's an order of execution issues here, so I'm ne I need to use the accumulator in this thing for both uh, counting the loop, but also I need to do a bit of math early on to make sure that I'm sending the things to the right address. And the problem is, if I do this. I'm gonna break that. So what I should do in fact is send the address that I'm sending it to first and then we will send our address second and that way I can actually store things uh, in a more sensible way I think. So what I'm gonna do is move uh, stuff into the accumulator, right? We're gonna basically read our stuff, move it into the accumulator and then we're gonna subtract x1 from it, right? So that is subtracting our target address, sorry, our address from the target address. And that way dat contains the actual first packet and the second one now contains the thing. Now we need to do a little bit of logic that we compare the accumulator. And if the accumulator is greater than zero, then it goes to higher. If the accumulator is less than zero, we go to lower. If it's the same, go to meter out, but, 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 I think, I think I'm actually going to start running out of, of uh, I might run out of instructions because I'm going to have to repeat this logic more than once, so, oh man, let me think, let me think, yeah, I mean, let's just, let's just do this for now, and we will just let the bugs teach me what I'm doing wrong. Let's just try moving the moving the data out from the DAT register, so that's the actual target address. We'll move that to x0 if it is greater than, if it's less than, we move to this. But then we still need to test if it's equal to 0 because we always execute the equals instructions if we do a compare. So we then need a further test, so it doesn't actually save us any code in this case, which is unfortunate. So we can't actually handle it like a, you know, three-way operator. And that means that since I have to do that for every single byte, and I'm going to have to have a loop, I'm going to run out of instructions in here. That's really what I'm seeing here, so I need some better way. I'm, I'm going to move, I'm going to take this and put it in the bigger thing, because I think I need to do more of the routing logic on this side. Let's just stick that in, and then of course I have to reconnect all my addresses, so let's do that. Aha! There you see. That was brilliant. Saved so much time there. But on the other side, let me just check, I need to move x3. x3 is still hooked up correctly. Yeah, I think I can do more logic here, and I can also put a terminator on this, and that way I could probably get away with using a simpler bit of hardware on the other side. But anyway, first of all, let's get this right. So we're going to move x0 into the accumulator, and then, of course, we need to now copy that to the dat register so that we actually have a copy of it, right? Because x is, a, is ephemeral. Then, of course, we have to subtract our address, which is supplied via x1. And so that should put the routing information in the accumulator and the actual packet data in the DAT register. So we need to send the accumulator over first, right? So we'll send the... Wait a second. Do I send the DAT register or the accumulator? No, I definitely should send the accumulator first because that's not going to be part of the packet. Then we'll send the DAT register and so that will actually be our first data byte. Then, now to make this work on the smaller one, we need to send a terminator, right, that says, hey, the packet is over, so we'll send like minus 999 or whatever. It, I don't see any negative values here, so I think this should absolutely work, right? So instead of having an accumulator counting down on this side, I can just look for the last byte in the packet this magic like terminator value thing so just kind of looking at this logic here um, so instead what we would do we'll just get rid of that and then we'll yeah we can copy can I copy yeah just let's just let's just rewrite this from scratch right let's 
we're going to use this one, which has all the X buses, and then do all the, the hooking and the unhooking. Let's just uh, fix my traces. We don't want to have any short circuits going on here. Okay, so here it is. This is beautiful. So we're going to sleep on X0, and as soon as we get something on X0, we need to... Uh, move it into the accumulator, right? Because the accumulator is going to keep track of our dressing. And then every single value after that, we're just going to... Uh, we're going to move it to the target bus. But we need to check to see if it's minus 999 first. And if I do that, then I will read it out. And I need a place to temporarily store it, don't I? just beginning to realize that this plan isn't gonna work and it's not it's not but 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 I have a better idea oh I have a better idea right so we have to use this big one we have to use this big I think the problem like this whole sending the address information in band is wrong I'm gonna use the analog line to send the address information right like oh this is genius this is gonna work, right? So, so wait a second. So what we're gonna do is, uh, okay, let's move the accumulator because we've done our math. We'll move that to the analog line. So the analog value will be either plus, minus, or zero. And so every cycle we just check. So sleep if, our sleep if there's nothing. Just wait, 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 wait. And as soon as we get something, we uh, we're gonna actually have to do something. Let me just think. Yeah, um, pardon me, brain is just having a moment. I need to get rid of the Terminator because, well, the Terminator is just being sent from the future to ruin my code. Now, okay, let me, uh, oh, why is this one so hard? Compare, we want to compare the value and we want to make sure that we, we do this correctly. Uh, oh, wait a second. Expected register or number? Well, um, don't worry. It's just because I haven't finished typing because my brain is lagging behind my fingers. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Okay, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. So we need to compare the analog line, P0, against 0. If it's greater than 0, we move it to, like, the up. We move X1 to X0, which is the higher out. If it's less than, we move x1 to x2, right? But then we need to test to see if it's equal. And if it's equal, right, so if p0 is equal to 0, then we move it to x3. Yeah, I guess that's x3. That's the only one that's left. And then that's it. Is it? That's my loop. Let me just try this. Step, step. Oh, brilliant. Data. Oh wrong something wrong there what's wrong so I wish I could read what is on p1 number right now reset that let's just step through and then step to see what's going on oh wow it failed right away that is unfortunate uh, 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 uh. we have 596 in the dat register and reset this. Hold on, hold on. Uh, bing. Step, 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 step. 301. Right, so we sleep and we get our first bite of data, right? Sleep X should come in. Oh! Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, duh! Yes! It was a hardware failure. Oh! It was a hardware failure, now it's a software failure. Boy, we're really messing up here. That is a whole lot of messing up. Ping, ping, ping. Right, now watch very carefully what happens. We move 301 into the accumulator. Accumulator goes negative, right? So the accumulator is negative, but and we're reading in the data. And apparently... The accumulator, apparently the P0 line is equal to 0. But we know the register that's feeding it is negative, and that makes me think 
that the analog lines are not allowed to go negative, right? So maybe maybe zero is just like nothing. Uh, so I guess I need to change the range of my input values here, right? I mean, one way I could do this, I mean, I can have logic that says if it's greater than or zero, but what I could just do is after subtracting, we could just add like a value. And since we're dealing with like, you know, hundreds, let's add 500 to P1 or to P1 to our accumulator, and then send that, send that across the wire. So, or should we, should we actually, uh, no, let's just stay with that. I'm just thinking, if there was something I could think about regarding setting digits. So we're gonna check for this to be 500, and this to be 500, and then this whole thing should be, it should be a success, but apparently uh, the powers of analog electronics are stymieing even my uh, understanding of these things. Step, 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 what is going, I, you know what? Uh, This should work. Perhaps I'm misunderstanding something. What am I missing here? How do I... You know what? Add 500. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, you see, it's 100. So 100 is the maximum. Zero is the minimum. So let's just change this. Let's just make this... Let's just do something else completely different. And now for something completely different. Instead of like computing a value, we're just gonna use well-known ranges. So compare the accumulator against the DAT register, right? Or against X2, sorry, X2. Now, if it's greater, we'll set it to like, a, you know, what, 100? Set 100, right? Down on the on this electronic, on this analog line. And if it's zero, or sorry, if it's negative, if it goes to the lower one, we'll set that. And then before that, we'll send 50, right? And so the thing is, we send that before those other two and everything should work. And then we just need to compare here. I'm assuming I can send a value of 50. Come on. Damn it! Ugh. Okay, okay, no, we're gonna get this. What is going on here? It, it, it's, it's, it's... Oh, there's an extra line there. I'm moving my accumulator, and, and that is a relic from an older version of the code. And we're still failing, though. We're still failing. Why must you taunt me this way? What's going on this time? X bus, we're sending zero. Why am I sending zero? What am I moving? We're moving, we're moving dat. Dat is now not the correct thing. We're moving the accumulator because I'm not copying the stuff to the DAT register. Yes, okay, one packet, second packet, third packet. Oh yes, we are packetizing the internet. We are f flooding packets everywhere. And this is probably the slowest I've ever managed this any Shenzhen IO problem, but oh, wow. And it's a really mediocre version. This is just the tip of the iceberg, Mr. Sun apparently pulling a lot of resources and groups to create various subsystems for something. Nobody knows what it is, although it's going to be very big and potentially very lucrative and interesting to the ongoing plot. Okay, so many more things to be done. Meanwhile, back in the land of early access, they've actually changed one of the puzzles. The sandwich maker was considered to be too difficult, so they created a less difficult version of it. And I used one, I came up with a version that used the memory. It's a bit lighter, and I guess, hey, I'm, I'm happy to be continuing to work on this. <laughs> so yes, still thoroughly enjoying working my way through Shenzhen IO, and I have some more episodes lined up. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.